Okay, guys, I got my 2010 F-150. It's a uh, King Ranch. Of course, it's got the 5.4. And we've got, um, actually, when I purchased the truck, this exhaust manifold was cracked. I heard it leaking, ticking, and um, told the dealer I wanted it replaced. I don't know why you have to tell them that. And uh, they replaced it. And then the other side, the driver's side, um, a couple years later, it happened again. A couple months after that, happened again. A couple months after that, it happened again. I had it to the dealer three times. I replaced three manifolds. And that seems to have cured. But now we're back on this side, and this is leaking again. And um, I can see a crack from the top, and I think there's one on the bottom. So I don't think there's any repair to it. It's all got to come out so let me uh fire this up so you can hear what it sounds like to begin with when it's cold That's quite annoying, so uh, it'll warm up about five minutes or so, and the sound will pretty much go away. But when I, uh, I, I just don't like it. It's annoying. I'm sure the fuel economy's down. Kind of hear a belt squeal too, so I'll be checking that out. But that's today's project. I'm gonna pull it inside, jack it up, take this inner fender well out, take tire off. I'm going to disconnect that heat shield right in there, and then I'm going to um, disconnect the exhaust underneath and see what a hassle this is to do it myself. Obviously, I can't trust the shop to do a good job, or it's just a Ford thing, but I, I want to try it myself, see if I can do a better job. Okay, I got her backed in the garage here, and the first thing I want to do... It, well, I better show you if I can see it. This is the passenger side. And there's a crack. A little out of focus. Get that. See that crack? It follows all the way down underneath. So it's not repairable. Um, I thought if it was a small crack, maybe I can get somebody to weld it or I get some kind of cast iron rod to, so I can weld it. But it's too far gone. Um, there's a heat shield in the way. You can't see the bolts. If you can see these upper ones, there's not much left to them. I think they're 13 millimeter, but they look a lot smaller than that now. And figure this is about five years ago they put this manifold on. Um, but this, this truck's in pretty good shape. The, um... You know, engine seems to have a lot of power and so on. I had to put a alternator and battery. It's about a thousand amp battery. It's a big one, right? Yeah, a thousand. And um, I have to take the starter off. And at the Y pipe, I pre-sprayed the bolts. That's what this smell is when it started. It's got some uh, PB blaster on everything, but I'll probably be spraying it fifty times. Um. So first thing to do is get on jack stands, take the wheel off, take the inner fender out, Dis oh, disconnect the battery, I loosen that just now, make sure this can't come up and come in contact, so I might put a rag there or something, wrap some tape around the cable, um, and let's see here, I got to remove the starter, I may have to loosen the two engine uh, motor mounts uh, bolts on this side and then jack the engine up a little bit because there's only like an inch and change room between the frame and the manifold to get your hands in there so I'll give you a little progress won't bore you with the small stuff here till I see something okay guys I got this jacked up safely on jack stands it's on 
a total of four. This should give, give me room here in this area to work. Got a mud flap, Phillips. We've got, let's see here, somewhere we got a bunch of clips holding this in. We got to get this inner fender out. That'll clear this up. Here's a push clip. I got to check around for him. Here's another one. I see how many we got. We could remove this. And then I got to get in there and see what this heat shield's hooked on there with. And uh, take that out of there. Okay, guys. Got the uh, inner fender well off. This opens up the side of the engine a little better. I would hope these designers, engineers, would get this a little better and put in a manifold where it's reachable. Behind right here is where the heat shield was on. And that lets us see two more nasty bolts. And then the third one up in here, the fourth one up in there. So now they're almost available. Here's a downpipe bolt. That looks pretty rusted there. That looks like it's going to snap off. So I probably got to heat that up. Cut that off. And then the other one is just as bad under there. If you can see it. But right there is our crack. It goes from there all the way up over and around. It's like it's not even attached. I, I've usually seen a crack going this way. But it looks like it goes all the way around. So I guess the next step... I guess would be to probably remove the downpipe bolts so that the manifold separated from the exhaust. And then I might plug off that exhaust if it drops down a little. Plug it off with a rag so we don't get any debris down in there. Okay, it looks like the downpipe's a 916 on this one. And it's quite rusted. I sprayed it the other day, but it still don't look like it'll come out. And I'll probably have to heat that up. My acetylene's empty on the small torch that I have. So, I don't know if I can use propane or if I gotta go get a tank. And of course it's a weekend. And uh, so, I think for better access, I gotta take that starter out. And so we gotta disconnect that. And then up here, the two motor mount bolts, and I can jack the motor up. That's gonna be fun figure out how to do that and then this sway bar right here is sort of in the way and we got our New York rust so I don't know if I can just loosen the bolts if it'll come down or if I gotta try to heat everything up now on to the next step I got the uh, starter out finally there's three 13 millimeter bolts go into the bell house and the top one you can't even see the middle one you can't get any well you can't get any wrenches on any of them because it's too close and the wrench is too thick to put a box end on so you have to use a 13 millimeter socket and um, you know about a five inch extension a six is a little long it hits on the uh, motor mount as you can see I got it out. It took about two hours. Look at the bottom bolts on that manifold. They are nothing. There's nothing there. And you can see the crack right to the right there. So the manifold is totally broke. And uh, with the starter out of the way, I might be able to get my hand up in there and take this light away a little bit. Um, yeah, I can sort of get out of the way um see it's just gonna be a bear no matter what try to get your hand up in there to get the bottom bolts but i'm gonna start fighting at it i think they're 13 millimeters so probably have to use a uh, probably a half inch socket and hopefully they won't break off but they probably will and that means a lot of drilling so yeah here we go I uh, took the air hammer and beat the rust around the bolts and then I heated them up. What I'm hoping for is to get the stud and nut out at the same time. I really don't want to break the stud off in 
the head and I don't want the nut to come off alone because there's not a lot of room to get the manifold off the studs. So the stud looks pretty rough shape for being replaced five years ago. So they probably used, you know, stock parts instead of the stainless. Let's uh, put an extractor on there, I guess, and see what happens. Okay, I got this heated up, and the bolt or the nuts are originally 13. I'm sorry, um, thir yeah, 13 millimeter, but they're worn down. I got a half inch wrench on there, open end. And this one feels good, and it looks like the nut and the stud. This is a front bolt. It's one of the harder ones to get to. So I'm excited about that. I'm just going to work my way across and heat them. I don't think you can see well enough, but I'm using a snap there. And I have to do it here. It's a small frame. If the heat is in the hot, I want to warm up the, the nut, obviously, but I want to warm up the stud all the way back to the block. Just in time to get it out of the unit. And the front nut was in decent shape, actually, but the rest of these don't really have a shape to them. They're all rusted off. So I've probably got to use the extractor on this. This is the last of the top exhaust bolts. I'm down to a 7 16 wrench now because there's nothing left but a wad of metal here. And I guess the trick I've learned on them is I used the uh, air impact and I went up and I vibrated the manifold so all the rust would come out. And then I went up on the nut itself and banged on that pretty good so that the nut would stick to the um, the stud bolt because I didn't want the stud to stay in the head. And then it's a, a trick I've learned since forever is tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen. And it shakes the crud off the threads to get it to come out a little better. And... I think we're on the home stretch of four out of eight. And this is, you know, at home without a lift. Using a couple good tools, but I guess the, the best tool to use would be heat. And get them cherry red and try not to burn the truck down and get the stud heated up and cooled down, heated up and cooled down. And then the vibration, I think, from the impact um it's a, a chisel impact i don't know where it is here here it is but uh i just put a bit go back here okay i just put a bit on there and i just went in and do, 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 like this and vibrated everything and i really think that helped and um the other thing is just patience it's just a terrible job to do very poor design. I don't know why they kept doing it for years and not change the heads or something so that you can get to them. So, just about at the end of this here. Now, this is a cast iron, you know, cast manifold with steel bolts and nuts and an aluminum head. Now, what sense does that make to begin with? These engineers need to learn a few things. Is uh, Things should be assembled with anti-seize. See the length here? That's coming out. Um, and then they, you know, the electrolysis happens. They need to know through the heat cycles that they need to use a, like a stainless steel stud, maybe a copper knot, something... That's not going to happen like this, so it's not a three-day process for the home guy. 
instead of working in the shop where you got a little better facilities and you can get to it and get underneath it. Um, and Andrew Camarada said it once on one of his videos that he thought a lot of things ought to be stainless steel. Now, and it, like exhaust systems and so on, why, you know, do they go just a short bit and you got to replace it? This is the fourth manifold on the truck since I've had it. And I bought it used, so um, it was uh, five years old when I bought it. So I bet you this has gone around a few times. All right, I got all the stud bolts out, except this rear one broke. And I probably got a little rough on it, but it very difficult to get out. I used one of these nut removers and a swivel and our long ratchet to get up through here because everything's so tight the air conditioner and the motor mount all this stuff's in the way um so what i've got to do is either i can drill into the center of this and um put an easy out in there i can see the rust around the edge of that bolt so I have a feeling that that probably won't work real well. I might break the easy out. I think the better way to do it would be to put a, uh, now that it's broke off and clean, I can weld to it. I think I could put a nut right up to the surface of that, weld inside the nut, and the heat of the weld probably will loosen up the threads enough, and then I can put a socket on it and back it out. I'm going to try that. I can use a little MIG welder and see if that works. But I am happy to get that out. And it's going to be thread chasing. I want to clean up all the threads so I can get the new studs in there by hand. And then I got a brush wheel to, or scotch bright or something to get the surface of the head cleaned right up. And um, I'm getting kind of excited. The uh, starter, when that come out, looked a little bit on the rough side. And there's 167,000, says Ford on it. Probably original starter. So I ordered a starter. It's very hard to put starter in also because this third top bolt right here is impossible to see. And, um, you know, I kind of miss the old GM where the two bolts were straight up from the bottom. So easy. I miss the old cars working on them. Okay, I just uh, big welded a nut on there. You see it cooling. I'm trying to fill the nut up so that it the stud gets good coverage. Um, let's see if you get a flash here. We got a medium heat and a medium speed rod, thirty thousandths and uh. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to see if I can put a nut on that, or I'm sorry, a socket on that. I think it's a, what is that, 9 16 so I'll be right back. All right, this is uh, the third nut I welded on there, or fourth, I don't know. But I went with a larger nut this time, so it probably got a little hotter, and that's actually turning. Yeah, I'm not using the best tool, but... It works. You can see in there we got look at that thing turning. Look at that. And the threads look pretty nice. So I don't think we hurt anything. Then the next step would be to clean up the the head surface and um, chase the threads. Get the new stainless steel bolts, get some NICs on them, torque them in there. I think they were 16, somewhere around 16 foot pounds, I don't know, somewhere in there. And maybe not even, but I'll look that up and uh, let's see if that's cool enough. Look at that, look at that. It's not really cool enough. 
Ugh. It's coming like Christmas. It's a if you want to do this kind of project at home, be prepared for patience. Sometimes I don't have a lot of patience. Look at this. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. Here it comes. Here it comes. There it is. All right. I got the uh, tap in there, and I'm cleaning up the threads. I uh, run them all the way in and running them all the way out. And uh, I want to make sure that my studs, you know, can thread in easily and all the way so we can get a good hold. So it's a slow, tedious job. And um, I think it's important. And after that, I'm going to put rags in the uh, exhaust ports. And I'm going to take um, probably a 90 degree drill and get the uh, surfaces cleaned up. Get them nice and clean. Get some brake clean in the air hose. Blow things out. And start putting my manifold and studs in. Okay, guys. I struggled. Really struggled here without a lift. But crawling in here. And I did not jack the engine up. I didn't take off the AC. And I started these top studs. That held the manifold even, and then if you're in the ball socket here on a downpipe, if you can see that, that helps support it also. And then I slid the gasket down in. I loosened up the bolt, started one, started the other, so the gasket I knew was in the proper location. And then I finger tight, and then I went underneath and struggled like crazy getting them in. And this type of head, these are stainless steel, but these have a hex. Um, so I was able to get a socket in there and it was still a struggle, but I got them torqued. And then now I'm going to go through and torque the nuts. And I looked up the spec. It says do from the rear, alternating top and bottom to uh, 35 foot pounds. So I'll go up about 10 pounds and maybe 15 or 20 pounds, probably 20 pounds. And then I'll find a finish up about 35 pounds then I've got to hook up the downpipe bolt bolts to the manifold here and then that then I'll be waiting on a starter because the starter here in the pile the starter I got the uh, wire looks melted and the connections are green and it's original Ford starter it's foolish 167,000 to put it back in there so I chased the threads for the starter lubed it with anics so the bolts should go in easier and then the new starter will be here in a couple days and i'll put the starter in in the meantime i'll finish putting all this back together get the inner fender well back in um if i find anything else wrong in here i'll fix that as i go obviously checking my brakes look good they were new last year um but i'm gonna look everything over see if i can find any other issues I got all my eight stainless steel studs with NICs on them, got them torqued up, and then I got the uh, nuts on, I got them torqued up, and I've got the Y-pipe new bolts and nuts in and uh, torqued up. So the only thing left is this starter. That's not coming for a couple of days. The uh, bolt. It's seized on here, so i got to work on that a little bit. And then when the starter comes, um, I think I already said I, I cleaned out the holes with an easy out. I, I, I made, or not an easy out, I'm sorry. I re-threaded the holes, cleaned them out, and then I um, put ANICs on them. So hopefully those bolts are going a lot faster than it took to get them out. It took about two hours to get the starter out of here. And... Uh, and we can fire this thing up. I think I can go ahead and assemble everything else till the starter comes and then uh, be ready to rock. All right, my kitty mascot come out here to see what we're doing. He's out here exploring. Squirrel, what are you doing? Huh? You don't know, do you? Just checking things out. All right, guys, I got the manifold done. I got everything tightened up. I'm excited. My knees are sore, but I'm excited. I got everything in there. It looks pretty good. It almost looks professional. 
I hope it lasts longer than it did last time. And uh, I guess if it needs to come off again with the anti-seize and the stainless steel, I think things have come apart a lot better. So I'll come back one more when we fire it up. I got the inner fender well back in, the mud flap on. I've got all my wire harnesses snapped back in the holes. Everything's back proper. I got my tire on. I got it torqued. I'm all excited. Now we're getting on to the starter. It just arrived and it looks awesome. It's a new one. And this is going to be fun to put in because they're only about, if it didn't have this little nub on the end, the bearing, um, would fit right in. But boy, they are tight, like an eighth of an inch, I think. Um, so I'm going to put this in. Get the clip back on it, and I'm going to hook up the battery and test it. Okay, I tightened up the Y pipe there, guys. And it's a 14 millimeter deep. I forgot what size it was. I'm just letting the uh, PD blaster uh, steam away there. I used quite a lot of it to get them studs out. But it looks pretty good. I'd say this is a fix. And um, we'll just let her idle, check things out. I'm all excited. Get some wheels back. We'll see you guys on the next one.